it's Bluebird. Welcome to the Distilled Kitchen. Haggis is an iconic Scottish dish, but few people know that this dish is made from the haggis animal, a species that has become endangered in Scotland due to the effects of climate change and overconsumption. Today, I want to spread awareness about this beautiful endangered species by cooking and eating it. So let's get to work making haggis, neeps, and taddies. This haggis was shot and killed near Loch Lamont. It was prepared in the traditional way with oats and suet. I'll take it out of its casing and put it lovingly in a small dish. Then I'll put this into a pan and fill the pan up with water, about an inch below the level of the bowl. Then I'll put a plate on top and steam this on medium to low heat for approximately one hour. Don't forget to check back in on your haggis periodically, just in case all the water in the pan evaporates. If that happens, you might end up with a burnt pan bottom, so refill the water if it's running low. While that's steaming, I'll prepare my taddies and neeps by peeling them and cutting them into approximately the same sized cubes. I have six taddies here and one big neep here. Then I'll put them into two different pots of boiling, well salted water. The taddies took about 25 minutes, whereas the neeps took longer, about 40 minutes to soften. They're ready when you can easily pierce through them with a chopstick. I've strained my taddies in a colander and put them back into the pot. I'll take my masher and mash these until they're fluffy with no lumps. In lieu of butter, I'm adding in some extra thick double Scottish cream, which is about the consistency of glue, if not thicker. Then I'll add some salt and cracked black pepper to taste. Haggis is usually on the salty side, so you might want to under season your neeps and taddies so that everything is more balanced out. These taddies are finished now, so I'll repeat the same process with my neeps by straining them in the colander and mashing them up with some double cream and salt and pepper. I guesstimate that I added about 100 milliliters of cream to each of these, but just keep tasting your neeps and taddies while you're seasoning them because you can always put more cream and salt and pepper in, but you can't take it back out. While I'm working on this, let's catch up with our old friend Jim from the distillery. I'm curious to know what kind of haggis he likes best. Well, my favorite haggis when I used to live in the Highlands, the haggis up there has got long legs on the left hand side and short legs on the right hand side. So when you're chasing that haggis around the hills, it can run level. So it runs round and round the hills and it can get away from you. So that's my favorite haggis. I used to have a small pit of haggis when I was young, but I actually ate it. Thanks, Jim. I've taken my haggis off the stove and I'll just fluff it up with a fork here. I want to say it looks and smells good, but it kind of reminds me of canned dog food. But anywho, let's plate this up with some of our neeps and taddies. I've also made some whiskey sauce to go with it, and you can see me make this in another video which I've linked above. I know haggis, neeps, and taddies is an iconic Scottish dish, but let's be honest, it doesn't look great. It's like three piles of baby food on one plate. Well, let's see if it tastes good at least. The taddies and neeps are nice, but the haggis has a strong organ meat aroma. It's probably the worst haggis I've had since moving to Scotland, and I don't think I'll be buying this brand again. I'm washing this down with Billy's Mojo, a cocktail made to celebrate the rebranding of our vodka at the distillery. I'll show you how to make that in another video. Anyways, I'm hungry, so I'm off to eat this in peace. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe below, and I'll see you next time.